Dr. Doug Luke is here, retired orthopedic surgeon, now focusing my career on health span and bone health. Are you taking drugs called PPIs or proton pump inhibitors, sometimes called Nexium, Protonix, or many other versions of the same thing for something like acid reflux or heartburn? Are you concerned that these drugs may be causing you to have osteoporosis and maybe be putting you at risk for fracture? Well, a lot of people now that these drugs are over the counter are taking these drugs for longer than the recommended 14 days that they're actually recommended to be taken to at a max. And a lot of doctors don't even know that people are taking these drugs, so they can't even counsel them on whether or not this is a good or a bad idea for them. Also, people take these drugs for what they think are heartburn, when really a lot of times it's not heartburn that is causing them their symptoms, but the drugs do relieve their symptoms, so they continue to take them and feel like they need them for a long period of time. If this is you or this is somebody that you are concerned about, stick around, because we're gonna talk about the research that goes into depth on do these drugs actually show an increased risk of fracture, an increased risk of osteoporosis or a reduction in bone mineral density? And what can be done about this and what potentially you should do if you're on one of these drugs, how you could potentially come off of a drug if it's the right thing for you, of course, with the recommendation from your own healthcare team. So stick around. So I wanna start with what a PPI actually is. A PPI stands for proton pump inhibitor. And a proton pump inhibitor is a type of drug that helps to reduce the amount of acid in your stomach. Now you might think that, ooh, acid is bad because we are kind of brought up to think that acid is bad. It sounds very caustic. But in the stomach, acid is actually really good. And the pH or the level of acid in our stomach is extremely high and the pH is extremely low. It's around one, which is almost as low as you can get. It is like that for a reason. It has been like that for hundreds of thousands, if not millions of years in our species and other species that preceded us before us. So this has been preserved in, in most animals, particularly mammals for a very, very long period of time. So acid in the stomach is good. When we take a PPI, we are actually blocking some of the components of the cells that make acid and prevent them from making acid. So they are extremely effective at helping our stomachs to prevent making acid, which if you have symptoms of acid reflux will make you feel better. So I'm gonna list out a bunch of names here because these drugs go by a lot of different names. So they can go by some of the generic names like omeprazole, lansaprazole, Esomeprazole, and some of the brand names like Prilosec, Nexium, Prevacid, Protonix, and there are others, but they will all say on there that they are proton pump inhibitors in one way or another. Now, the history of these drugs is kind of interesting because when they came out, there was a thought that these drugs are potentially really dangerous and they should not be taken for more than seven or 10 days by anybody. And that's why they were prescription drugs, they were controlled, and nobody had access to them without a doctor's prescription. Over time, the safety was demonstrated and they became over the counter because so many people needed them and now many people are taking them. This is a multi-billion dollar industry in the world of heartburn control or acid reflux control, and a lot of people choose to use PPIs rather than another older version uh, of a similar drug called an H2 blocker, which we'll talk about later, because the PPIs, again, are so effective at what they do. Just because something is over the counter, we need to understand that it is not necessarily safe and that there are safeguards to be put in place. And if you look on the package, it probably says not to be taken for more than 14 days without a prescription by your doctor. So there are still guidelines in place, but a lot of people don't follow them. Not only do people generally not follow them, they also generally don't tell their doctor that they're on them because either they forget or they don't wanna talk about it and they don't wanna get lectured by their doctor, so they just don't bring it up because they assume it's not a big deal. The truth is, is that it kind of can be a big deal and a proton pump inhibitor is going to impact your ability of your gut to digest things. But here's the question we wanna to answer today. Is it related to osteoporosis, bone mineral density, and ultimately fracture risk? So if we wanna answer the question of are PPIs associated with, related to, or even potentially causal of fractures, reduction in bone mineral density and osteoporosis, we need to look at the literature. So I've got four studies here to walk you through. 
This first one is from 2008 and it's called Acid Suppressive Medications and the Risk of Bone Loss and Fracture in Older Adults. Sounds like a good place to start. So this study talks about several different key mechanisms in which a PPI could change bone metabolism. So when you raise the pH of the stomach or reduce the level of acid, a couple of key things change. So number one, it slows down calcium absorption and potentially prevents it altogether, depending on how effective the PPI is at changing the acidic element of the stomach because the stomach needs to be acidic in order for calcium to be absorbed. The stomach also needs to be acidic to absorb B12. It also needs to be acidic to help break down protein and get protein ready for the pancreatic enzymes to then help to process the protein into the amino acids that we need to not only build muscle, but also to build bone. And there's also some interesting evidence to say that reducing the stomach acid may also secondarily increase parathyroid hormone in the bloodstream. This isn't exactly clear, but if anybody has looked at parathyroid hormone and bone metabolism, we know that as parathyroid hormone goes up chronically, it will result in an increase in loss of bone. So clearly that would also be bad. Now this first study was not actually an intervention study or a cohort study, so it can't tell us whether PPI use is associated with or actually causal of loss of bone or bone mineral density or increased fracture risk. So let's look at some additional studies. All right, now study number two is a 2012 publication that is an actual cohort study. So what they did is they looked at over time people that were consuming PPIs versus not. And what they found is that people that were consuming PPIs had a 40% increased risk of fracture compared to those that were not. Now this is only an association, so we can't say that the PPI use caused it, but clearly there's signal there. So the next study that we wanna talk about is a 2010 publication, which is really interesting because it kind of shows the counter picture. And what you might find is that if you go to your doctor and say, hey, I wanna come off of this drug because I'm concerned that it causes osteoporosis and increases hip fracture risk or risk of fracture in general, you might get some kickback and your doctor might say, well, no, there's studies that say that that isn't true. Um, and the pharmaceutical industry is very good at presenting these studies to doctors, so they have a bias that they may not even be aware of. But I wanna show you the study because in the abstract of this study, which is unfortunately what most people end up looking at, the abstract of this study actually says that there's no change in fracture risk. But if we look at the statistics, you can see that that's clearly not true. Now, I don't think the authors are outright lying in this study. I think that they are, they are saying what is true for a certain component of the statistics. But if you look at the, the sub-analysis or the subgroup analysis uh, that they actually put in the paper, you can see that there is a subgroup that has an increased fracture risk. So let's go through that. Now, this study was actually part of the data that came out of the Women's Health Initiative, which I talk about often when it comes to hormone use and the potential benefits for osteoporosis. But this study specifically, they were looking at people that used PPIs, so that particular drug that we're talking about, and whether or not they had taken them for less than one year, two years, or three years, and they divided them out into different groups. And what you see in this group when it comes to, to fracture risk is that the risk of fracture accelerates and goes up for the amount of time that they've been on the drug. So the longer you've been on the drug, the higher your risk of fracture is. And the hazard ratio or the actual risk associated with this defined element is higher and it continues to go up as the duration on the drug goes up. So that if you are on a PPI for over three years, there's a 30% increased risk of fracture, which is small statistically, but I think clinically relevant when people are on these for years, potentially even decades. Another interesting perspective here and why I think this is really confusing for some people is that this study showed, and this is consistent in multiple studies, that the bone mineral density was not different for those that used PPIs and not. And so there is a push in the literature and a push in the medical community to say that we don't even need to evaluate fracture risk. We only need to look at bone mineral density, which I think is a big error because bone mineral density, as I talk about often, is just the amount of density of minerals in your bone. It is not your bone quality. 
there's a component of that in bone quality and bone strength, but it is not the entire picture. And this is a good example where fracture risk goes up, but bone mineral density doesn't change. And I think that that is probably because there, is, there are really two main components to bone. There's the outside cortical bone, and then there's the inside trabecular bone. And some things are gonna impact one more than the other, but DEXA can't differentiate. And lastly, another important thing that this study pointed out is that they captured information on both PPIs and the H2 blockers. And I mentioned this earlier, this is another class of, of drug, an older class of drug that is used to treat acid reflux. And these drugs go by names like cimetidine, renantidine, uh, famotidine. Um, the brand names for those would be Tagamet, Zantac, and Pepsid. These drugs are not PPIs. They go by H2 blockers, and they did not appear to have that same fracture risk as the PPIs. All right, now this last study is a 2018 study. So this is the most recent study, and it is actually a meta-analysis of 33 different studies, all peer-reviewed publications of different styles of study. So there's a lot of different information in here. But what it showed is that there is a linear increase in the duration of time in which you use a PPI to your increased risk of fracture. And it shows that really, if you are taking these for more than a couple of years, there's a 60% higher chance of experiencing a fracture. So this is pretty convincing that there is definitely a signal here, and this is something that we should at least be having a conversation about. I think what's interesting in this study is that the authors say that they might increase fracture risk, but their statistics, again, would say otherwise. Now, interestingly, in this study, as well as the Women's Health Initiative data points, that BMD or bone mineral density was not different. So again, if your doctor is saying, hey, this isn't gonna change your bone mineral density, so we don't need to worry about it, remember bone mineral density is not the same as fracture risk. Sorry to interrupt this video, but if you are enjoying this content, please like, subscribe, and sign up for notifications so we can let you know when our next video is available. If you know anybody that would benefit from this, please share this with them or any group that they're a part of. And lastly, if you want to learn more about how we manage osteoporosis or other tips and tricks that you can do on your own, look for the link for our masterclass in the description below and sign up for our free masterclass to really get more information and to be able to potentially ask your own questions. All right, so are PPIs really bad? Well, they are definitely there for a reason. So when these drugs came out, it was a cure for a lot of people that were struggling with actual stomach acid coming through the bottom part of the tube that goes down to the stomach called the esophagus. There are a number of reasons why this can occur, and there are medical reasons why you should take a PPI. So these drugs are definitely good, and they are definitely there for a reason. If you have something like Barrett's esophagus, if you have a hernia or a structural defect in that area where your stomach and your esophagus meet, you might need to be on one of these drugs long term. And just like any drug, it's a risk benefit equation. The benefit very well may outweigh the risk. But if you have just acid reflux, and not to minimize it, because I know it can be very uncomfortable, but if you just have acid reflux and you don't know why you have it, you haven't been diagnosed with one of these structural things or Barrett's esophagus, then maybe some more exploration might be in order. So our approach is this. When we see a patient that comes in, especially a patient that has osteoporosis and is worried about bone health, what we'll do is we'll have that conversation of uh, you know, why, do, why are they on it? Do they have any of these things that are clear indications for the drug? Have they been taking it for a long time and does their doctor even know? And again, often the answer is they've been taking it for a long time and no, they haven't told their doctor about it. And then we start to get into the weeds of, well, how does your gut function? Do you have regular bowel movements? Do you have any other signs of gut dysfunction? Uh, intestinal uh, uh, bacterial overgrowth? Do you have um, any of the other things that we look for that can help us to determine what kind of gut function you have? And then potentially even doing some functional testing to help weed those things out. A lot of times when we start to treat the gut, we find that the PPI use is now unnecessary. So then we have to walk them through the process of actually getting them off of PPI, which can be really challenging because if you've been on one of these drugs for a long time, it can be really hard to get off of these drugs. Your, your stomach has to go through this process of kind of working that machinery back up and getting back to the point where you can actually 
um, make stomach acid effectively. And sometimes your symptoms will even come back as you're sort of making this process. So this is something that really must be done with a trained professional. And we can use some of these other drugs like H2 blockers as a transition tool. Um, but again, this is something that really has to be done in conjunction with your team with a clear diagnosis and a clear understanding of what the path is. So don't just stop taking these things if you don't know why you're taking them. Definitely talk to your own team. There is a reason to take them, but if you can avoid taking them, it is probably better for your bones. All right, so that's it. I hope that helped to explain some of the controversy around PPIs and bone health. If you are on one of these drugs, definitely talk to your own team. If you want to come off of the drug, find somebody that can help you come off of the drug if your team doesn't know or understand how to help you do that. If you enjoyed this content, again, please like, subscribe, and sign up for notifications. Share this with anybody that you think would benefit from this information. And if you wanna know more, look for the free masterclass link in the description below. And lastly, I wanna hear from you. Please leave comments down below. We answer these on a daily basis. If you have any questions, let us know. If you have ideas for topics that you wanna hear about, definitely let us know that too. We will put these in line. We have a long list of really great topics that we're getting to on a weekly basis. So let us know what yours are. And the more people choose topics, the uh, more likely we are to actually make a video on them. So definitely help us to choose what topics are of most interest and let us know in the comments below. Thanks so much for making it to the end of this video.